You can buy them on the streets like illegal drugs and stolen cars. But you can't get one legally unless you like, uh, you know, two years of red tape and some slack-jawed bureaucrats. If you've got the money and a Sharpie lawyer, you can get one in a flash. But no one is standing in line to adopt the thousands of homeless babies languishing in institutions and foster homes begging for the loving parents they don't have. Adoption, homeless kids, homosexual adoption. On the next, come on, join me. Everybody, how are you? Let's turn this camera on. Good, you got it on. Let's get going here now. I want to introduce you to Marsha Ribbon. Uh, is it Ribbon or Ribbon? Ribbon. Ribbon. Okay, Marsha, you're with an organization shedding light on the dark side of ad adoption. Actually, that's your book yes. that you wrote. I'm going to give you a little uh, background on Marsha. She's a birth mother. She surrendered her daughter at birth. Co-founder of Origins, a national group for mothers who have lost their children. Uh, you challenge three myths, I believe, in your book that uh, uh, home for kids, challenge that. There's a nece necessity for a home for kids. You challenge uh, a kid uh, for homeless families, uh, that homeless families have to have a kid. And you challenge uh, the fact that uh, there are lots of healthy adoptive homes. Am I correct? Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, sort let, of me, correct. let me ask you then. Yeah. We've all heard of the good, the bad, and the ugly that goes with adoption. Uh, let's try to narrow our focus tonight, all right? What is the function of adoption? Is it to, well, tell me the function. Okay, first. I think that's why I said you sort of got the point. I think that um, adoption used to be to find homes for homeless children. It has gotten now to be to find children for childless couples. I think the, the switch, the, the, the slant in adoption has changed and it's not a good change. Well, is there any reason why you shouldn't find kids for homeless children? I mean, uh, kids for homeless, for homeless parents. Couples. If children. those parents really want uh, to have a child. Well, first of all, just being childless is is no criteria. Okay, good parents could be infertile or not infertile. Just and being good infertile. Good parents could already have two or three children. That's what I just said. Yeah. 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 You're right. Infertility in and of itself doesn't necessitate that and we tend to no, but is it a crime to be infertile and to want to give your home to a child i mean this is someone that's wonderful yeah. that's wonderful yeah. if you're infertile and you want to give your home for a child as you said in the opening there are some thirty-six thousand children in this country that are free and available and waiting for adoptions they're being warehoused in foster homes in institutions and in hospitals but nobody wants those children because they're the wrong race, uh, they're the wrong age. Wait a second. Uh, don't they want the children because a lot of times uh, the fact that they have to go through so much red tape with the bureaucracy set up? No, no that's wrong, not huh? to get the children well, that are already free and available. Crap, all right, because I've been trying to adopt for four years. Four years. And I've gone, I've gone to all the agencies. I don't care how old the child is. I'll have take you the gone? Child to, have you gone to agencies that deal specifically with hard to place gone children? Everywhere, and you know really? what they tell me? I'm too old. Do I look too old for you? Hard to place child? I find that hard to believe. More, I can't believe you that. You can find there it hard books. to believe all the hell you want. I've tried. There are books. Right. There's a blue book in New York that's this thick. It's thicker than the New York Telephone Directory. That's full of children that are waiting for homes, and there's no age restriction. They place those children in single parent homes. They place well, those let me children. ask you a question then. You just moved into a different area. Mm -hmm. If there is no restriction on those children who are very hard to have adopted, why is there a restriction of age on the part of the parent of children who aren't that hard to adopt? Healthy white newborns mm -hmm. are scarce. Mm -hmm. They're scarce. And that's what everybody wants. That's what there's a long waiting list for. There's not a long waiting list for black children, for interracial children, for handicapped children, and for older children. When I, you offered say a, to, I offered to take handicapped children. You did? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to know what agency turned you down 
because I'll, I'll, I can, I'll let you know all of them after the show. Okay. All right. And I'll give you a list of agencies that you could probably call tomorrow we and get a child. We don't care if they were handicapped children or anything else. Well, I can give you a list of agencies after the show that you can call up and get a child tomorrow Good. because there are children waiting for homes. Good. Good. I got some more questions I want to ask you. How about the fact that, uh, where's Artie? Is Artie here? Artie, let me ask you a question. You started a very successful organization called the Golden Cradle, with which I'm very familiar. All right? And you help birth mothers. Are you in this to keep kids away from the abortionist knife, or are you in it just to make a buck for yourself? Well, first of all, I don't make a buck. I have worked for nine years uh, absolutely free. I've never taken money. I go on speaking tours. And basically, I spend a lot of time with, involved in adoption. Uh, my vocation is I'm, in the, I'm a businessman who, who works in the auto supply business in the Philadelphia area and came into adoption kind of back door in the fact that my wife and I had trouble conceiving. Later, we adopted. Uh, after five and a half years, we adopted. And then this is five and a half years of baloney to go through, didn't A lot more. Yeah. Because like, you wanted a white, healthy infant. Is that true? Why, why do you have everyone's answers? It took you didn't him a have long your own. Time. You didn't. <laughs> you obviously, Why you obviously he didn't have your own answer when you Why had your own baby. Why doesn't he answer? Did you adopt the handicap? It's his turn, mouth. Okay, fine. <laughs> Basically, what, what Marsh is alluding to early in the conversation, and the, the, the basic problem is the fact that there are close to 3 million couples in this country looking to adopt. Is that wrong? Uh, no, no, let me, let me explain that more. What that means is, uh, on one hand, you have th close to 3 million couples in the United States. Mm -hmm. And since 1979, there have only been approximately 50,000 healthy white infants available for adoption. So obviously, the couple's looking for the white healthy infant that Marsh alluded to. Uh, there are, like Marcia said, lots of kids, but unfortunately, lots of couples are not looking for those those kids, and that's a major problem. How about you? When you were looking for your for your adoption, uh, as Marcia says, were you looking for a healthy white child? We felt that we could accept a child with possible correctable handicaps. Uh, we weren't sure if we could handle a Down syndrome child. It's not for everybody. Not everybody can yeah. handle that kind yeah. of situation. And does it make the person a bad person Absolutely because they can't not. handle it? Absolutely not. But uh, I, can, I can understand Marsha's feelings about people looking for white, healthy infants. Is there something wrong, Marsha, with people looking for white, healthy infants? Only in terms of the fact that they don't exist in the quantity that people want them. And they're not willing to take, quote, second best. What they try what and is do instead... What is second best? Second best to them would be... As, as Artie just said, a Down syndrome child, he considered that, in his personal opinion, I'm not making a value judgment, he considered that child second best for his particular choice. People consider interracial children second See, best in their as particular preference. As I told preference. you, my wife and I have looked in all areas and all corners. I even contacted Artie's uh, group about three years ago, Artie. All right, I didn't have any success. Uh, we, looked, we, were, we didn't care if it was an interracial child, we didn't care if the child was permanently handicapped. I'm not talking Down syndrome, right, because it would have been my wife's first child. So I wasn't talking about Down syndrome. But uh, it didn't have to be a healthy white child, and we still had a difficult time. And I'm telling you the problem, Artie, uh, if I came to you today, I'm 55 years old, pal, and I'm in damn good shape, all right? Trust me. Trust me. My grandfather lived to 101, my grandmother 97, my father 86, my uncle's still alive, he's 93. What in screw makes you think I'm going to flake off right away? <laughs> Why wouldn't I be a perfect, perfect parent? Probably you would be. The, the unfortunate thing is that most agencies in the United States are very concerned about the, the child growing up and being closer in age to, to the parent in the fact that a 55-year-old... Good, then I'll adopt an 18-year-old Swedish girl. <laughs> Please get to Next, we're going to meet, meet a man who was sold on the black market. Stand by. Right away.
Joining us, joining us at home base is Artie Elgard. Now, in case I didn't tell you about Artie, uh, Golden uh, Cradle is a nonprofit adoption agency that aggressively searches, all right, uh, for pregnant girls who want to give their children up for adoption. Do you have anything uh, that you have freeze framed that you can show me uh, and our viewers at home? The type of advertising that Artie does. This is the type of advertising you'll see in Philadelphia, New Jersey, and areas. Uh, around where Artie is looking for these women. And thank God there's someone like him doing it, all right? If nothing else, it uh, saves a potentially great brain for our American economy instead of having it aborted. Standing here at our loudmouth joining us is Joe Sal, founder of Adoption Circle. Uh, Joe, why don't you tell us your story, all right? You, you were adopted, weren't you? I was adopted in 1939. I was sold in the black market for $5,000, sold. You were sold in the black market? I was sold, yes, by a social worker. By a social worker? By a social worker. She How sold much did she get for you? $5,000. What a bum deal. <laughs> Could have been more. Huh? OK. She sold you for 5000 bucks. then what? Right. Uh, she sold babies for 20 years in New York. How many babies did she sell? Hundreds. She Hundreds was arrested and tried a year-long trial in 1949. And she, she was- time in jail? No, $1,000 fine. That was no fun. Well, well, now let's think about this. Would the babies have been languishing in some... Did you have good parents who brought you up? Absolutely. Did you love them? Absolutely. Still they, do. They help you? They help me. Help you a lot. So let's assume that hundreds of babies were helped that otherwise would have been in uh, lying in hospital in those days uh, or some of these other areas and never been adopted. Someone could also have helped my birth mother keep me. Yes. Given her the choice, given her support. Do you know that your birth mother wasn't uh, given the choice? Um, from what I know of, birth, of Bessie Bernard, she wasn't given any choice. My birth mother didn't know I was sold either. She didn't know you were sold? No, absolutely Did not. she know you were going to be adopted? Yes. She did? Yes. So what's the difference between sold and adopted? I mean, nowadays, you got a lawyer who goes in and gets something for you, and you pay the lawyer a $10,000 fee to get the baby for you, and you adopt the baby, but you didn't have to pay the mother anything. I mean, you've still paid 10000 bucks. It's, it's a fee. I think that selling babies is slavery somehow. Okay. All right. And Were you sold into slavery? No, I wasn't sold into slavery. However, my history is, is uh, stolen, sealed. My records were falsified. My birth date was falsified. Ah, now we get into something else. The records being sealed, falsification of the birth uh, papers, the inability of uh, Joe to ever know if his family had uh, diabetes. How many of your relatives died from cancer? What the heart attack rates were in your family? None of these statistics are available to you. Aside from medical information, which is not available, it would be nice to know if I was Italian or French or Polish. Wouldn't uh, matter, I but it would be nice to know. You were Polish. I, I'll accept it. I accept it. And you should. And you should be damn proud of it, my friend, all right? Now, let me go to Gerald. Joining us uh, at our rather loud mouth is Gerald Kaminsky, an attorney for independent adoption. Gerald, Joe has just given us, uh, to him, a horror story, all right? But honestly, his mother gave him up because she didn't want or couldn't raise him. Shouldn't she have the right to remain anonymous and protect her privacy? Of course she should have the right, but I'd like to go back to something that you mentioned in an earlier segment as far as your efforts to adopt. There are healthy white infants available for adoption, more than most people think. And if you you're not search gonna get them that, out, You're not gonna get that kind of follow up from our she, guest, Marsha. Then she may not know the right technique, which is absolutely legal. She may not be uh, diligent enough in her search. She may not be uh, as uh, caring or as uh, persistent as many of the people are, but there are well, absolutely share with us. Share with us some of the ways, all right? Many of the so people sure are successful. Like many people are successful through word of mouth, through talking about their needs, about their desires to have a family, with other professionals, with other persons who may come in contact with pregnant women. Many people are successful through the newspaper ads, and I know there are people who are going to say the newspaper ads are buying babies, but they're not. It's just a v advertising your free speech right to talk about your desire to have a family. Uh, let's get and back. the birth what? mothers respond, and they respond for good reasons. All right, have you advertised for babies in the newspaper? No, no, the clients- Any of your in, clients? In, in New Jersey, the clients have do, Have they been yes. successful? Absolutely. How many clients have advertised, and how many have been successful? 
I have clients who are successful about once every two weeks in my practice. In other words... From advertising in the paper. That's right. And what age do they get the baby? A newborn? They usually get newborns. Just about all the time it's newborns. If right they're black, the they get a black child. If they're white, they get a white child. If they're Hispanic, if they're Oriental. It's certainly up to them, and that's right. How's that uh, ring with you, Marsha? I wanted to comment on something you said before to Joe. You said, um, you know, what was the difference if he were sold or adopted legally. I think you ought to think about Michelle Launders. Okay, you said Joe's mother probably wanted to give him up for adoption. Michelle Launders had a baby who she loved and couldn't take care of. So did Nicole Smeagol. So did thousands of other women. And they intended to make a loving plan for their child by giving that child up for adoption. They did not want their child sold to be abused, beaten, and murdered. This is what How can happen, does that happen through newspaper, well, through newspaper ads there are no protections for these people, those for these children. What screening do you do? Those birth mothers wanted to make what sure that that child was placed parents? properly. They would, have, they would have done something about it and checked into it and made sure that the adoption went the way they thought it did. But they came up Who would have checked, checked into what? Check? Who would have checked into we what? Assume, they know I assume we're went. talking they about the Steinberg Who, who child, checked right? if two people answer a newspaper ad? The publisher of the paper? Who's, the who's counseling these people the and who's people screening who these people? To The people who respond to the newspaper ads are well aware of what they're doing. They've had a situation which, which has, has been going on for a number of months. Most of the people who respond to the newspaper ads are well into their second half of the pregnancy. They are aware of their situation. They know what they want. Who they want what's best aware? for their child. Who has made a someone aware who answers an ad in the paper? Or they'd be in the abortion clinic. Well, that I object to also. I, several times you have made the comment that uh, Joe and other adoptees, if they had, didn't find these loving homes, they'd be aborted. And I strongly object no, to that. No, not Joe. It wasn't legal in his day. You I strongly, strongly object, object to me that. saying it? Yes. That's tough. Well, <laughs> At least I'll give you credit. At least, at least, it may, at least you're it entitled to credit. It may have been illegal credit. in Joe's day, but let me tell you something. All the I hangers had, and all the bad stuff. I could have had an abortion. Baloney. Don't feed me that pro-choice crap. Yeah. That's all it is. You want the right to control your own body, right? Because you're a woman, so I control my own body. Remember, I am not ladies. Telling you. No, that's not what I'm saying. 50% of those bodies come out with testicles. Have you got those two? More, that's not what I'm saying. I am not, I am not necessarily pro-choice or pro-abortion. What I am saying is that women who surrender their children for adoption are not choosing adoption over abortion. In the choice is between, in many cases, though, the choice is between adoption or keeping the child. And yeah. abortion is, in many cases, the woman doesn't even know she's pregnant until it's way too far for an ab abortion. Whether she's Where did you get your history way too far for an abortion? Supreme Court, Roe versus Wade, January 22nd, 1973. A woman in the first trimester may have an abortion I'm by her own choice. The in the second trimester. trimester, in the second trimester, she needs the concurrence of a doctor. Mm -hmm. And in the third trimester, third trimester, seven, eighth, and ninth month, she needs two doctors. Well, so tell me how safe. tough it is to that get an abortion. That doesn't make it safe. Huh? That doesn't make it safe. It sure as hell doesn't make no, it safe for it the unborn it, child. It doesn't make it safe for either of them. I think what we're getting away from is what Jerry and Marcia first started at, and that was uh, Marcia asked the question about screening. And I think that's where the, the difference is when you're talking about a licensed agency compared to private adoption. All right, let's, ta let's talk about screening. How do you handle uh, it? We have, we have a uh, couple's first start out with a, a profile uh, test, a personality test. Uh, after they pass that screening, they go through uh, what's called a home study, uh, which is a complete evaluation of the couple's growing up period, how they go along with their parents and other siblings, and we go into a whole history. Couples have to write a complete autobiography. Uh, our couples are screened by police checks and also FBI checks. Uh, we do a you lot check of work. to see if there's been child abuse involved. Exactly. Right. Or any of those things. Exactly. If there's been any... Oh, let me ask you a question. Would you adopt a baby to a uh, homosexual? Uh, we've never had that situation. I'm not sure I can give you a, a direct answer right all now. All right, I want to um, finish this in the next segment, all right? How and who decides who gets the baby? 
next. Stand by. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to uh, come back up here on home. Someone's having an attack in the audience or a baby. Huh? Let's, uh, let me go back to Artie before we go to our loudmouth and introduce uh, a new guest that we have at the loudmouth. You get more than 3,000 requests from couples every single year, all right, for, for babies. You place only 100 babies. What is your criteria for the lucky few? It's basically a long list, but it's very general. Uh, basically, our couples have to be married for at least three years, be at least 25 years of age, uh, be of good sound health, emotional how stability. Man, how old? We, uh, most agencies uh, stop at age 35. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're a little bit flexible. We go into the early 40s. Tell you what I think I'm going to do after this show. I am going to get a hold of my attorney, and I am going to bring an age discrimination case. All right? There is no such thing as age discrimination in this country, is there? That's bullshit. <laughs> Marsha. Do you claim? That already said to you before that age, uh, there is an age category for his agency. I personally know that he placed a child with somebody who was over 60 years of age. Now, whether this was before you were a recognized agency or not, I don't know. Artie? But we do definitely know that you have placed that a was, baby in um, a home where the father was over 60. Um. How about it, Artie, baby? In order to... <laughs> <laughs> I did, for the first three and a half years, actually three years with Golden Cradle, I did private adoption. And we later became a licensed agency. And uh, at that time, there was less flexibility with rules and regulations as there were earlier on. Well, I have quite uh, a few things I'd like to discuss. Incidentally, folks, let me introduce you uh, if more I than may. to our guest who's talking, Carol Gustafson. She's... Uh, Adoptive Parents for Open Records. Yeah. I would like to address several things with you, Artie, because I have a very deep concern about some of the things that you're doing. Basically, uh, to start out with the billboards and so forth and the lack of dignity that you show to people who come into this world and are placed for adoption. We've had for the past couple of years dignity in dying. Where is your dignity with birth for the children? Uh, let me ask you a question. That's something let me, let, me, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Maybe unbeknownst to you, but through the United States, uh, a baby is found at least once a day. About 350 to 400 babies are found a year in trash cans wrapped up in, in towels and sheets. Uh, on doorsteps just a few weeks ago in Wildwood, New Jersey, a baby was found abandoned under the boardwalk. We advertise to offer assistance to pregnant women to prevent things like this from happening. We don't twist arms as far as adoption is concerned. Adoption is the option for them with us. However, we offer, we offer, we offer, let me finish my, I didn't interrupt you, ma'am. Carol, adoption. I did not interrupt it you. It says nothing about I did about not interrupt you. I'd like to continue. Let him answer women. first, Carol. You asked me a question, I'd like to answer it. Okay. Thank you. Um, the advertising is done to prevent things like this from happening. If the advertising offends you, I'm sorry, I can't help it. The advertising would not offend three million couples in this country are looking to adopt or their parents who are very concerned look, about the, uh, the... I have sensitivities. I, bring, I just watched the tape of a program that you were on explaining why you use these billboards, and you made the statement that anybody who wasn't seeking a baby would not be offended Do by find... these... I am an adoptive parent. I don't speak for <clears throat> all adoptive all right. parents, and but certainly you got a good I don't like what you're doing. So, she, wait a second. Okay. She, Carol has a good point, but let me ask you, Carol. Do you find as much distaste for the billboards that uh, advertise for abortion? I, I don't like anything that is going to be abusing a situation. Abortion and people that are looking at that choice in life have to know that there are places out there that where abortions are available don't people and who babies. Adopt, don't people but, who want to adopt or have their child adopted? Yes have to know that there are places out there, too? I am speaking to the adoptees who have not been recognized as human beings who grow up from babyhood to adulthood, 
who have feelings. Mm -hmm. And so we so take- Explain the feelings. Uh, all right. Uh, we've already spoken to Joe Saul here. Joe Saul had feelings. He'd like to know a little bit more I about his background. He also admits that his feelings were not injured by his adoptive parents, that they gave him love, guidance, direction, discipline, and he came out My to be a fine man. My children love me too, and they love our family, and they love our relations. The part that I'm speaking to is that children that are brought into this world deserve a healthy amount of respect. And when they grow up, we are not, as adoptive parents, the answers to everything in their lives. We first One of the men, are their real may, parents. Get into may this I okay? finish so speaking, don't Marty? Them. No, I'd like, I'd like to interrupt you You are interrupting me. <laughs> I think, well, I'm not going to let we're talking, you interrupt we're me. We're talking about getting them into this world. You can't get them into this world when they're found under the boardwalk wrapped in a sheet. You were talking dead, about... Okay? A minority. Well, we're talking, I mean, we're talking Marshall about earlier one was day. talking it's about the Steinberg case. That's not a majority. A He's tragedy. talking about four hundred. He's talking about four hundred a year. Are you? I don't know the numbers. There's a lot more abuse well, he, and he adoption than you're aware of. He can prove this, Marshall. All you're doing his lip syncing. They live happily ever after. And that is not the case already. Most of the phone books in this country did not even have adoption agencies listed under adoption. Okay. All right. Well, this 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 is a lot of garbage. All right. Let's find out right now about if a child is adopted, should the records be available to that child when he hits 18? or to the parents who adopted that child. Let me go to Gerald. What do you think, Gerald? Only if all the parties involved, the adoptive family, the birth parents, and the child. I think each of the parties to the adoption situation has a constitutional right to privacy, to be left alone. When not someone's to be privacy, into. Gerald, I don't want you to start sounding like Judge Bork to me now. When someone's privacy is not only impaired, but his health is impaired or her health is impaired, because someone has information that would help them, his privacy, her privacy, the mother's privacy who gave up that child, I think is overridden by the needs of the yeah. child. Yeah. I would also like, like to, to ask agree you. with you for once that, yeah, that's true. And in all the statutes that I'm aware of, if there's a health emergency, the court is going to seek out or Not help true. the it birth parents to seek out. Not true. And I, as an adopter, we are people who died needing kidneys and the records weren't open for them. Children, no, when true. they're 35 years old, giving approval for them That's to have right. this information. Let me tell you. No I, other parent well, let me has tell to you, do that. I, I, I might get a little jammed for this. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I might get a little jam for this. I've got an older brother who was adopted because my parents supposedly couldn't have children until I came along, right? He was adopted <laughs> to this day. He doesn't know who his real mother and real, his biological mother and father uh, are. He is extremely disturbed by not having that information. If there is anyone in the country who knows of a male child that they put out for adoption who was born on August the 3rd of 1929, I'd like to know. Where was he born? I'd like to know. And Did he was it, born in New York State. In New York State? We in have York searched City. for and found the adoptive, uh, the uh, original families for all of our children. It has not been a devastation. They are all going on as far healthier, emotionally healthier people. Their birth parents are, are feeling these same feelings of, of thankfulness and knowing that their children are growing well and that they have a place in life, and that they have a much deeper understanding of why they were placed for right. a next we're, gonna meet, next, we're going to meet a man who wants to help children that nobody else wants. Stand by. Yeah.